When declaring variables, there will be some basic rules that we're going to have to follow. First of all, the variable names that we use must be alphanumeric or underscore. And the first character must be either an alpha or an underscore. You cannot use numeric as the first character. Also, you'll need to stay away from the C-sharp keywords. No keywords are allowed as variable names. Now, because C-sharp is case sensitive, you will have some options in terms of how you want to handle case. But remember that it, all, it must always match exactly. Now, generally speaking, what we'll want to do is use the Pascal casing convention for just about everything that we create, except for maybe parameters that we use in our, the, our arguments of the methods. We use camel casing convention for those function parameters. Now, the Pascal casing convention indicates that every single word, first letter of every single word is uppercase as we push the word together to form the identifier, where with the camel casing convention, the very first letter of the first word is in lowercase. Remember, the important thing to, to recall here is that since C-sharp is case sensitive, you have to basically stick to a known pattern and then make sure that you use that throughout. That way it will be, be predictable. Now, to actually declare the variables, we generally use a format where we define the data type and the variable name, as in this example, int myint. So we're specifying specifically that the variable is of an integer data type. The name of the variable is myint. If you like, you can also initialize that variable when it's declared. int myint equals 5, for example, would create an integer, integer variable called myint and assign the value of 5 as its initial value. You can declare multiple variables in one statement if you like. Simply separate the different variables with a comma. So int i comma j creates two integer variables, i and j, respectively. Now, if you're identifying values that are representative of strings, make sure that you use the double quote characters to identify the values of strings. So if it's a string variable, the value should be double quoted versus characters in which we identify those values using single quotes. We'll get more into strings a little bit in level two. Since strings are classes all of their own, they're kind of a subject for another day. Creating constants is very similar to declaring variables, except that we don't necessarily have to worry about data type declarations. What we're primarily concerned with is to identify the name of the constant and then give it a value. We have to assign a value when we create the constant, because once the constant is defined, you can't change that value. The general convention for creating constants is to use all uppercase characters, although you see different variations on this convention. So if I wanted to create a constant called pi, capital PI equals 3.14 to give a very rough estimate of the value of pi, or as in the second example, days and week equals 7. So those values are assumed that they will never change. We will always have 7 days in a week. We will always have the same value of pi. So those might be good constant values. The nice thing, of course, is that in our program code, we can refer to those values now by using the constants rather than having to refer to the actual numbers or values themselves. Now, declaring reference variables is very much the same as type variables. The difference, however, of course, is that the variable refers to an object on the, on the heap rather than the actual variable value itself. Reference type variables will be formally introduced in level two. Right now, we're just going to focus on creating value type variables.